Hello my dear students and viewers, welcome back to my channel Scorpio class. So here we are with one more interesting and informative video for all my dear class 10 students. So yes, here we are going to discuss a chapter from Karnataka State Board class 10 first language English textbook. The chapter's name is The Elixir of Life written by C.V. Raman. So here in this video, we are going to discuss the summary of the chapter and all the key points of this chapter. So let's get started. But before that, if you are new to my channel and watching my video for the first time, do subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get the notification of all the upcoming videos. So let's start. So here, as I said, C.V. Raman has written this chapter about the elixir of life. And here we see the importance of water. The entire chapter is based on the importance of water, how we need to take care of it, how it's like a magical uh, substance for the human life and entity. So let's say the first point or the first importance which the C.V. Raman has stated here, the real elixir of life. Water is the true elixir of life, not the mythical Amrita. So elixir means some important or magical substance of life and it is not the mythical amrita mythical means something legendary or imaginative amrita is a substance or a fluid which can make you immortal so this water is not any substance which can make you immortal but it is a magical fluid for life yes because it gives life to every human every living being on earth it is considered as true elixir of life, a true elixir of life, a true magical substance of life. And it is the most essential and commonly available substance. We know, yes, it is freely and commonly available substance. Then he states the example of Nile Valley. We know River Nile, which is in Egypt. Okay, so the contrast between the desert and fertile land in Egypt is due to the river Nile. Again, river Nile is nothing but water. So it shows the difference between the desert and fertile land, which you can see here in the image, how the water transforms lifeless land into a fertile areas. One side you can see the desert land and the other side you can see the fertile land, how well and how beauty, how good beauty do you see? it? It just adds on to the beauty of the nature. Next example in the next paragraph, the author C.B. Raman says about the creation of soil by rivers, how the soil is made and the, it makes the land fertile. So the Nile created Egypt's fertile soil over thousands of years by depositing silt. Civilization thrives where water flows regularly. So here C.B. Raman explains that near the river Nile, the, there was a fertile soil because the water had been flowing and the silt had been deposited for thousands of years. Silt, silt is nothing but a small soil particles which has many nutrients in it which can help in agricultural purposes. So wherever there is water and depositing of silt, civilization thrives there, exists there, civilization grows there. Civilization is nothing but the human uh, dwelling, the human residence, human starts residing there because they get all the nutrients and they are able to grow the crops over there. So it thrives where water flows regularly. The next paragraph here Sivi Raman says about is water's vital role, how important the water is. Water has played a significant role in shaping Earth's history and it is crucial to life, development and survival. So if there is water, the life will exist and it will help in development and survival of any living being there. Next it talks about the water and the beauty of nature. Water adds to the beauty of the landscape, streams, ponds and tanks. It reflects the mood of the nature like eyes reflect human emotion. As you have eyes, through the eyes of a human, you can make out what kind of emotion the person is having. If it's sad, you can make out from the eyes. If it's happy, if it's shocked and surprised, you can make it from the eyes. It reflects. Similarly, water reflects the mood of the nature. If you put water, it becomes so lively. It starts blooming. The flowers and everything is so fresh. So that's how he relates and tells it reflects the mood of the nature. 
Next, he talks about water carrying silt. Water can carry fine soil particles causing the murky color of tanks. It helps in soil distribution and fertility. So as water flows, it carries the salt particles in it, soil particles in it, and that makes the color murky, this, this, the brownie, the gloomy or dark color. And then it helps in the distribution of the soil and its fertility because it just moves from one place to another. Next, he talks about the constructive and the destructive role of water. Water helps to form soil but can also cause soil erosion. If it is uncontrolled, it leads to loss of agricultural land. Right? If you do not check the water, if it is helpful, yes, no doubt, it helps to form soil but it can also cause soil erosion well, where all the nutrients of the soil gets washed away through the heavy flow of water and the agricultural land is destroyed. As you can see in the picture, the field gets destroyed due to the floods. So this has to be controlled. So water has both constructive and destructive role. Next, he talks about the process of soil erosion. Erosion starts silently but becomes severe, forming gullies and ravines. Heavy rain, deforestation and land slope contribute to erosion. Now, process of soil erosion, it starts silently. It slowly just starts slipping of the sand from some parts of the area, slopey areas. And then it starts forming gullies. Gullies are nothing but a deep, uh, you can say, uh, a deep way on the road. Like you have small streams of water. In the similar way, the gullies are made. It separates to, uh, separates the land. It has or you can say it yes, separates the land and the same thing is ravens where the land is divided you can say small gullies are made so small streams are made which again breaks the soil uh, con continuity of the soil and it it helps in soil erosion. Now, soil erosion is not helpful because it will lose the nutrients and the agriculture and the growing of crops cannot be done in such areas. So, it is yes, a destructive part, but it also leads to soil erosion if the water flow is not checked and controlled. Next, he talks about controlling soil erosion. How to control soil erosion? Measures include terracing, burns, contour plowing and planting more number of trees. The main aim is to control water flow early to avoid soil loss. So if you have more plants grown, it ultimately will have no soil erosion. It will control soil erosion and the main aim will be achieved that is to avoid soil loss. When the soils are firm, when the land is firm, the soil will not get washed away easily with the water flow. So that is how we can control soil erosion. So next thing he talks about in the chapter is about water in living beings. All plants and animals need water for physiological activities. Moisture in soil is essential for plant growth and human welfare. So as human beings need water to carry out all their activities, similarly plants and animals also need water for carrying out their physiological activities to drink, eat, breathe and also to, be, to survive on the earth. Then he talks about rainwater management. Much rainwater runs off and is lost. Means we cannot, we are not able to store it. So what does India, he, what does he suggest? He says India must harvest and store this water for agriculture and survival. So you can make tanks, you can make different things. You have to have the facilities of storing water so that you can use it for agriculture and survival when there is summer season or when there is not enough rain. Then he talks about the forestation and conservation. Planting trees can prevent erosion and conserve rainwater. Development of civilized forest is essential for ecological balance. Like a good thick forest is really very important for an ecological balance. Ecological balance again to maintain proper rain, to, to maintain the natural uh, balance system. It is very important that we have proper forest. If not, we will not have the balance system in the environment also. So he talks about all this uses and then he also talks about waterways and hydroelectric power. 
Water control can help in transport through canals and generate electricity. Rural economy can greatly benefit from this. So he also talks about transportation through canals and small internal uh, waterways. And he also talks about generate electricity, how it will help in generating electricity. And it can be benefited greatly for the rural economy. Next, again at last, he concludes by saying water, it is common, it is commonly available, yet it is unique, it's special. Water seems ordinary, but it has unusual scientific properties. It has many scientific properties. Its study is important and ongoing in science and research. And it's so important that it's still the science is researching on its important. And it goes on. Thus, we have seen all the important features of water and how useful it is. On the other hand, it can also be destructive. So it is on us how to use use it, how to resourcefully use it, how to uh, save and store it for the upcoming days. So with this, we come to an end with the beautiful chapter of Elixir of Life written by C.B. Raman. I hope this summary has uh, helped you to understand the entire chapter in very few important key points. And if you understand it, if you understood it, and if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if our videos are helping you study better, please support us by clicking the thanks button below. Your small help means a lot to us. Thank you and stay tuned.